let's take a look at an app called Go Talk Now Light. Notice this is a light version. There is also Go Talk Now, which does cost money. Okay. But if you're not sure if your child would like this app or utilize this app well, before you spend the money on the app, you could try the free version and see if they respond well to it. Then you would know and you could spend the money on the, um, the app that costs more. So what is this app? This is an app that supports understanding of symbolic communication. So on this app, you're gonna be able to make basic icon boards to support requesting, greetings, labeling, etc. The app is going to provide a relatively easy and free way to introduce that symbolic communication to a child and hopefully increase the specificity of their communication. And in an ideal world, we would actually see a reduction in frustration as well, because when you can't communicate, it is very frustrating. All right, so let's go ahead. This is what you'll see if you open it up in the App Store. I'm going to go ahead and open the app. Notice I have Go Talk Light Now. I have already started to create a book for this individual. So there is a player here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the player. And you can see some pre-created icons that I've already made. So this is page one. I've chosen here to go with four icons. Um, notice there's nothing here that I can change anything. We're not in the editor form. This is actually the form that we would use to communicate. So in this, I can click on a button Help. and it would actually repeat the, the word. So again, I've set this all up so it does all this. So I've chosen maybe help, talk, play with me, and bathroom, maybe four things that somebody would want to communicate. You wouldn't have to use these representations. There's definitely other pictures. You could find your own pictures, um, but these are just ones that I found in the pre-created library. Another thing you can do, so this is, again, there's an image library that you can choose from. You can also use your own pictures. So these are actual pictures of my plants, my cat, my fish. So I actually created buttons that indicated things that I would like to do that I can push. Feed Rojo. I would like to feed, it's actually Rojo, but we'll forgive her. Um, so I'd like to feed Rojo. Okay, so I'm going to go feed Rojo. Rojo. You also are able to, the beach. to pick a picture. Don't we all want to go to the beach? Um, you can pick a picture from online. So I actually, for this one, I went to the internet, downloaded a picture of the beach and used that. Okay, so there are three different ways that you can get images. And notice this is also a four picture display. The other neat thing you can do here is something that's a bit more contextual in terms of environment. So here I've taken a picture of my living room. And what I've done is I've actually set up different activities that I can do in my living room. And you'll see these boxes that are here. The color boxes will indicate if I touch in that area, it can tell somebody what I'd like to do in that area. So maybe I want to sit in my chair. Okay. So maybe I want to sit in my chair. Maybe I want to read a book or turn on my lights or look at my pictures. Okay. So you can pick um, a, an environment. You could um, take a picture of somewhere that's in your house or the classroom, um, a playground. So you could take a picture and then label different activities or phrases. Maybe you want to have, um, you know, the child wants to ask somebody to play with them on the playground so we could come up with different phrases. You also can upload a picture. So just like, you know, back here on this page, I was able to find a picture of the beach. I could go find a picture of a playground and I could upload it there. Okay. So now let's take a look at the page editor. So here, the home is just going to take me back to my first page. Okay. So if I want to edit, I'm going to take three fingers, swipe down. Okay. So now I can go into page editor and notice that I have um, an editor button here and I have a couple other pieces. So the editor button, I'm not going to show you everything that you can do. There is a lot of different pieces you can do here. But I want to show you just a few basics. You can change the background color. So if there's a color that's better for your child to be able to see, they have a preference in color. You could actually have different um, colors on different backgrounds. So maybe this is, you know, phrases that I want to say to somebody. My next page is things I like to do. So you could change the color based on that. That might enable them to quickly find the pictures. So I could do that. I could also change the number of icons on a page. So here now I'm able to add more buttons. So if I wanted to tap to add a button now, um, I can add, you know, uh, five more buttons to my page. We do recommend that, especially if you're starting out with a child, that you start with a smaller number on the page. That's going to be less confusing. And then as they do start to understand, you can increase the number of icons on a page. Okay. So those are going to be two of the um, main features you'll probably use when you're creating pages for your child. Okay. So if I want to add 
you'll notice I click on that. It says button text. So button text, if I want to, um, let's say I'm going to look up a picture um, that these are phrases. So maybe I want to say um, I need a break. So I'm going to click on button text and I will type in what I want this to say. Okay. So I need a break. All right. Done. So notice it says that I can change the size. I can change the font. I can change the color. Um, so I can make it look however I want to. I'm going to leave it just like that. If I want to change the background color, I can change the background color here, um, you know, depending on what I what I might want. Maybe I want the break to look yellow. Okay, maybe that's what I want it to look like. Especially, you know, sometimes if we've used um, a break card or something, you could try to make the background look like whatever the break card looked like for a child. So that would be a good way to use this, okay? Um, so if I pick the background color, I can pick a border. Um, so now if I wanna add an image, so again, I told you that there were different ways that you could do this. So there's a GoTalk image library, internet search, or take a photo or from the photo library. GoTalk image library is going to have a lot of different pictures, okay? So you can scroll down and look, or you can also do a search, okay? So maybe I wanna see, do you have anything that looks like break? Well, uh, maybe not representative of what I would think a break would look like. Maybe though, maybe this would look like a break to me. So, if, you know, if I'm doing my work, coffee break is going to be, you know, good for me. Notice I can change and move where this is. So I need a break. I might use this icon when I've worked on something for a little too long, all right? So um, we've labeled the action here. So what to say? So I'm gonna have it say, I need a break. All right. I can pick which voice I want to use. I could have, you know, a German voice. I need a break. I need a break. Okay. So you can change, obviously, whatever voice makes the most sense um, for you, but there's a lot of different options. All right. So now I've added a button. I say I'm done. I now have a new icon in there. Okay. Um, if I want to use um, something from my photos, I could actually go to my camera. Notice my camera's here. I could actually take a picture. Or I could cancel that. I could take a, a photo from my photo library. Okay. So now, oh, ah. so now I go to my photo library and I want to um, do pottery. Okay. So now I have a picture of my pottery here. I can do all the same things. All right. I'm not going to go through that, but you can see how you can add different pictures. So that's pottery. All right. If I want to add in, let's say here, I wanted to add in the background, okay? So you see it says here, tap here to set the image. So I'm tapping here. Maybe I wanna do the internet search this time. So I want to find a picture of a playground. So let's try to do that. All right, there's a nice playground. We'll click that playground. So now I have a playground, so I can make it bigger, smaller, I can move it around, I can do what I'd like to with it. All right, now it, it kind of guides you here, which is really nice. Tap here to add a tapable region to the scene. So I'm going to add um, here, tap the region to set the action or auditory cue. So I'm gonna set the action as, you know, slide. Okay, I'm gonna pick a voice. We're gonna do Arthur now. Slide. Okay, sounds good to me. So now when I click on that area, it's going to say slide, okay? Um, you can also, um, you can highlight, you can click to highlight the tappable areas in player. So if I don't click that, I'm not gonna click this so you can see it. Um, if I toggle that on, it's going to keep that box there. If I have it toggled off, it's not going to, okay? So let's actually go and look at that. So if I go to the player version of this, so notice on my page here, I have the boxes. Here I don't, but when I touch the slide, slide, it says slide, okay? So again, once your child learns those areas, you don't necessarily always need those boxes, but you can keep them on there. It doesn't really matter, whatever is the preference, okay? All right. I need a break. Um, apparently I need a break. Let's go back to page editor and just take a look at a couple of features. You can, if you have a lot of picked pages, you can actually scroll back and forth through your pages quickly. Um, there is a feature where you can have some quick buttons. So let's say you have something that you might want to add to multiple pages. So if you were going to do 
sentence starters. So if you were going to do, I want, maybe you would put that in here again, and we would recommend that you try to get them to say the phrases and, and be able to discriminate these um, pictures first before you do that. But then, um, you know, the express page is actually going to add a little bit of a sentence strip up here. So you could actually, um, you could then put um, pictures up in there. Let me show you that real quick. Um, if I go to my player. Now I have this up here. So um, I could put multiple things up here and start creating a sentence. So help talk. All right. Um, you can kind of see that. All right. And that is Go Talk Now Light. So there are, you know, if you click on downloads, there are some, you know, the image library. I've already downloaded the basic Go Talk Now. There are some that cost more money, so you could always download them. But if you actually up, you have the option here to upgrade to the Go Talk Now features. So that would give you, you know, unlimited pages, unlimited communication books. So there's lots of different features that you would have in there. So if you get started with this with your child and you realize, oh, I really like this, that would be a great time to maybe say, oh, I want to upgrade. There are lots of different settings, a lot of different pieces that you can kind of put in place here. You can see all of those. Again, we're not going to go through all of it, but you can always, if there's something you're interested in knowing, you can always just do a quick Google search and find videos from other people on this. All right. Um, they do have a help button. So there's some tutorials, um, a user's guide. So that's always there and accessible for you. Again, just a great tool to get a kid communicating and hopefully um, reducing frustration because they can tell you, hey, I want to go play with my cat right now. All right. Hope you enjoy this app. Hope it's very meaningful for you and your child and that there's an increase in communication and a reduction in some of that frustration due to not being able to communicate. Have fun.